When the Fukushima plant went into meltdown caused by an earthquake 12 years ago, the reactor's cooling systems were damaged. Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, began pumping seawater into the facility to prevent the reactors from overheating. This water, contaminated with radioactive material, has been stored in tanks near the site, some of it for 12 years. Japan's solution has been to treat, dilute, then release the water into the ocean. This gradual process of releasing the treated water will take 30 years. This solution has been approved by multiple unaffiliated international groups, including the International Atomic Energy Association, or IAEA, and by the UN's nuclear watchdog. Scientists have also approved the wastewater release. The IAEA, which has a permanent office at Fukushima, said an independent on-site analysis had shown that the tritium concentration in the water discharged was, quote, far below the operational limit of 1,500 becquerels per liter. That limit is six times less than the World Health Organization's limit for drinking water, which is at 10,000 becquerels per liter. According to the IAEA's active monitoring, the current levels of radiation in released wastewater are at 205 becquerels per liter. Part of the problem surrounding scientific consensus around the release of wastewater is that as science has advanced, so has specialization around scientific fields. While nuclear scientists agree that the gradual release of treated wastewater into the ocean will have no long-standing impact on humans or marine life, the U.S. National Association of Marine Laboratories calls for more research to be done into the impacts on marine life. In Japan, South Korea, and Fiji, protesters remain opposed to the release of wastewater in the ocean. The governments of the Marshall Islands and Tahiti are also apprehensive. China also announced that it would suspend aquatic imports like seafood from Japan. Greenpeace has published a study that says that long-term environmental effects of radioactive isotopes remain unclear and understudied. It is important to acknowledge the reasons people have strong objections to the release of treated wastewater. There remains significant cultural trauma surrounding the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, generalized anxiety about health disorders in nuclear bomb su survivors and their children exists to this day. This cultural trauma also exists in many Pacific islands that were close to American nuclear bomb test sites. Part of the Japanese domestic suspicions around the government's policy around nuclear safety is due to the fact that many survivors of the American nuclear bombing of Hiroshima did not receive treatment and were instead used as test subjects by American and Japanese commissions to study the effects of radiation poisoning and exposure. The meltdown at Fukushima is also a monument to the fact that the Japanese government failed in its duties to ensure the proper safeguards in the plant. This undermines the public's trust in the government in general, but also specifically in its ability to provide for the safety of its citizens around nuclear projects and cleanup. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists cites a report that says, quote, the Fukushima nuclear power plant accident was the result of collusion between the government, the regulators, and TEPCO. Quote, they effectively betrayed the nation's right to be safe from nuclear accidents. TEPCO has also had several accidents to do with the storage of wastewater at the facility, releasing that in August 2013, 300 metric tons of highly radioactive water leaked from a storage tank. In October 2013, TEPCO revealed another tank was leaking and some of the highly radioactive water may have also reached the ocean. In February 2014, a valve left open by mistake allowed about 100 tons of highly radioactive water to overflow from a storage tank. In October 2016, about 32 liters of highly radioactive water leaked from a seam in a water tank. Distrust in governments also exists on a larger scale due to the failure of governments to adequately create climate change and environmental protection policy. As extreme weather events continue to become more common and this summer saw record-breaking heat, it is clear that governments are failing to fully address the issue on a global scale, often preferring to downplay the severity of the climate crisis rather than enacting real policies to regulate large corporate entities that are the world's main carbon emitters. To many climate activists, it seems clear that government interests do not prioritize the environment or the planet.
It is important to recognize that governments only act responsibly when they are actively held accountable. It is in the context of intense global scrutiny and domestic activism that the Japanese government has created its program to treat wastewater. It was also under a Chinese nuclear scientist's appeal in 2021 that the IAEA became involved in monitoring the wastewater release. Let's discuss China's role in this news story. China's decision to temporarily cease importing aquatic products from Japan due to concerns about the wastewater release from the Fukushima plant could indeed be seen as a strategic move to create controversy around Japan's plan and to project its own influence in the global media landscape. By taking a strong stance against the wastewater release and highlighting potential risks, China may aim to generate public attention both domestically and internationally and thereby exert pressure on Japan while portraying itself as a responsible actor concerned about environmental and public safety issues. This could serve to create controversy around Japan's plan and position China as a protector of the environment and marine life. Furthermore, China's involvement in this news story can be viewed as part of its broader efforts to extend its influence in global media. Western news organizations have traditionally dominated the global media landscape, and China has been striving to counterbalance this dominance by increasing its presence in international media and shaping narratives that align with its interests. By taking a stance on international issues like the Fukushima wastewater release, China can engage in information warfare and shape perceptions on a global scale. The claim by Polygraph, a fact-checking organization affiliated with Radio Free Europe and Voice of America, that China is distorting the risks of the Fukushima wastewater dump highlights the complexity of information warfare in today's media landscape. Governments and various actors often leverage news stories and events to further their agendas, making it crucial for consumers of news to critically evaluate sources and information. China amplifies its criticism of the Japanese decision to release wastewater into the Pacific with networks of social media accounts that promote pro-China influencers and push state-sponsored narratives to the forefront of the dialogue on social media. Namita Hayden is a German immigrant living in China, and she has published a video in opposition to the release of wastewater at Here Fukushima. Again. So recently there was this very concerning incident where Japan released the radioactive contaminated water into the Pacific Ocean. So recently you can see a lot of discussions on Twitter on how harmful this water actually is. But I'm here today to provide another viewpoint regarding the legality of this incident. So what you need to know first is that Japan's decision to release this radioactive contaminated water was made unilaterally. And this unilateral decision is against the two most important international environmental laws, the London Protocol and the UN Clause. According to those two laws, any environmental intervention that has a potential transboundary impact must be discussed with the stakeholders, the countries and the local communities prior to do this decision. So therefore, Japan's decision caused a lot of countries, including but not limited to China, to feel op op opposition, they feel panic, and they feel fear. The impact of this is that now China has banned the fishery import from Japan, and I see a lot of Chinese people refuse to eat fish that was imported from Japan. Further, critics of China claim that the Chinese ban on Japanese aquatic imports is hypocritical, given that many Chinese nuclear reactors release wastewater into the ocean with far higher levels of radioactive contamination. Another Twitter user, Gabriel Vildau, says this perspective, quote, misstates Beijing's actual concerns. They are worried about radioactive isotopes not present in normal wastewater releases, so comparing tritium levels at other nuclear plants is beside the point. The same concern is also widespread in South Korea. It's a Xinhua article that criticizes the Japanese plan as, quote, unjustified and irresponsible action. The wastewater being released from the Fukushima plant has been filtered and treated to remove 62 different radioactive isotopes from contaminated water and will meet IAEA safety standards, as explained in the comprehensive report released by the IAEA. This rise in the temperature of Sino-Japanese relations has created a sense of victimization in this Chinese vlogger in Japan.
十六時なんですけれども、はい、なんでこう書いてるんですかって、はい、話させてください、はい、それはまあ聞いてみないと、はい、中国人に対して書いているっていうふうに怒ってるのかそれともこの福島県産の食材を使ってることに対して怒ってるのかいや私は福島産の食材はどうでもいいんですけどまあなぜ中国人がやって書いてあるって、はい、そういうことなんですよ、はい、あれちょっとそういいですか中にいらっしゃるんで聞いてきたんですけど、はい、やっぱりそうですね要は中国人に対してっていうあれじゃなくてここに来る方のために要はあのけ福島県産のものを使ってるからもしそもそも入る前の段階として、うんうん、だから嫌なんだったらそもそもうちには入らないでくださいね中国人としてこれは国籍差別につながると思いますよ何でかつながる中国なぜ中国パーさんの嫌がる方がいらっしゃるから、うんうん、そういう人たちのためにここのお店自体は福島県産のものを使ってるから中国人あ特にニュースで最近そういうふうになってるんでこういうふうにでそれは国籍差別なんですよお店の経営者の判断権利があってやってることなので警察がこれこんな書き方ダメだっていうのはできないんでですけどお話聞いたらこれ日替わりで結構書いてること書いてること変わるらしいんでまた明日には書くこと変わるみたいです今日は変わりますえじゃあお伝えはできるけど変われるかってどっかわかんないですそれはもういやいやいやどうと思いますああよくないじゃあ書き換えるって言ってるんでお願いしますよ In the video, the blogger calls the police on a restaurant owner who had a sign in his window which read, alerting all Chinese people that this store only serves food sourced from Fukushima. The vlogger cited the sign as a form of discrimination. The vlogger then encouraged his viewers that if they experienced discrimination to speak up and stand up for their rights. Those who experience systemic discrimination are often wary of calling the police. These feelings of victimization and discrimination may be in part fueled by Toru Hashimoto, former governor of Osaka Prefecture, and Hideo Higashi Kokubaru, former governor of Miyazaki Prefecture, who said in an interview Chinese tourists entering Japan should be given Fukushima contaminated water to drink, seafood from Fukushima to eat, and swim in the sea of Fukushima. The increasing politicization of Fukushima wastewater release as an issue about Sino Japanese tensions overshadows the concerns of Japanese, South Korean, and Fijian protesters. Although it is possible their fear has been stoked by media narratives, it is counterproductive to trivialize their very real concerns. To assuage fears about contaminated seafood, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida released a video showing him eating sashimi from Fukushima.、Hmm. Although the Chinese ban on importing Japanese aquatic products may be symbolic or misguided, it will hopefully combat a very real problem in the region overfishing. While the sardine population naturally fluctuates in response to changing ocean conditions, fishing can increase the frequency and intensify the magnitude of forage fish collapse. A study published in 2015 directly found that fishing pressure worsens natural population level collapses of forage fish species. The Pacific sardine population has declined 95% since 2006, and it is now below the minimum level required to support a commercial fishery called the cutoff. Thank you for watching this Hua Ajie Qianxian report.